Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome once again to another awesome edition on the behalf of Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. I am your host, Shabar Judah Israel, and the topic of discussion will be concerning Cornelius. Was Cornelius an Israelite or was he considered to be a Gentile or a heathen? Please share the video with family and friends and be sure to subscribe uh, to help the movement, if you will. So without further ado, we get into the lesson tonight. You're going to need a King James Holy Bible. You will need a King James Holy Bible along with the Apocryphal books. And if you want to take notes, feel free to do that. So now we're going into the Cornelius issue to get over inner and understanding. All right. So I want to start off in the New Testament dealing with the book of Acts chapter 10. Follow along, brothers and sisters, if you will. Please follow along. And let's discover, was Cornelius an Israelite or was he considered a Gentile? All right, so this is Acts chapter 10. So Acts chapter 10, uh, this speaks about how the gospel was given to the Gentiles. Now, there are two different types of Gentiles. We have biological blood Gentiles, and we also have Israelite foreigners, better yet was known as Gentiles in the New Testament. So, Cornelius, dealing with the Cornelius issue, you got to come to terms to know that Cornelius was an Israelite foreigner. All right, guys? He wasn't a biological Gentile. He was simply an Israelite foreigner. How do we know that? I'm going to show you. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So in Acts chapter 10, verse 1, it says, the man named Cornelius was a centurion of a band called the Italian band. Many brothers and sisters, uh, they misunderstand what's being said here when it says Cornelius he was a centurion. Now, what is a centurion? A centurion is a commander, <clears throat> a commander that's put in charge over a hundred men. Okay. <clears throat> Thus you have centurion, which means century, dealing with a hundred. So Cornelius was a, a centurion. He was a commander over a hundred men. And he was uh, of the Italian band. So Cornelius was uh, uh, he was a soldier in the Roman army but he was not a biological Roman. All right, He just was a commander a centurion over a hundred men in the Roman army. Acts chapter 10 verse 2 he was a devout man he was a devout man and he was a devoted man to God we know the heathens, they have never been devoted to the Most High God. Okay, um, this is Psalms 36 verse 1 as a precept. So Psalms in the Old Testament 36 verse 1. To show you that the heathen was never devoted to God. Psalms chapter 36 Verse 1, and it reads, the, tra the transgression of the wicked said within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. So the transgression of the wicked said within their hearts that there is no fear of God before their eyes. You see, so we know that Cornelius was not considered to be the wicked, which are the biological Gentiles and the heathens. Why? Because Acts chapter 10 verse 2 says that he was a devout man. All right. Um, another precept, Acts 22 and 12. So now Acts 22 and verse 12. 
It says, and one, Ananias, a devout man, according to the law. See, to be a devout man, if you're a devout man for the Lord, that means you are a keeper of the law. That means that you keep God's laws wholeheartedly. Okay? And using the precept to Acts 22, verse 12, just like Ananias, he was a devout man. Ananias was an Israelite. It says, Ananias was a devout man according to the law. Acts 22, verse 12, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there. So to be a devout man is simply to walk according to the laws of God. So that's how we know that Cornelius, it was impossible for Cornelius to be a, a biological heathen because we showed you in Psalm 36, 1, that the transgression of the wicked, there is no fear of the Lord in his eyes. Uh, there is no fear of the Lord. You see, and um, continuing on, back in Acts chapter 10, verse 2, Cornelius, he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house. Now, what is the fear of God? Because it said Cornelius feared God. What is the fear of God? Proverbs 1 and 7. Proverbs 1 and 7 in the Old Testament as a, as a precept. And it says in Proverbs 1 and 7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I, I mean, yo, know, you can say it like that. Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's Proverbs 1 and 7. Because it said that Cornelius was a devout man and he feared God. Proverbs 1 and 7 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of of knowledge now you know that's how we can see that Cornelius he has to be an Israelite you see back to Acts chapter 10 verse 2 he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always so Cornelius he couldn't have been a biological either because first and foremost the heathen, they don't pray to God continuously. The heathen, they're, the, they're not devoted to the Most High and keeping his laws. Let me show you another precept. This is how we know that Cornelius had to be a biological Israelite. All right? Now, as far as the heathen, they, they are not devoted to the Most High and they don't fear the Most High. Now, I'm going to show you another precept, but this time I'm going into the Apocrypha, guys. I'm going into the Apocrypha and um, let's look at Second Ezra 3 and 31. I believe that's it. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 31. Second Ezra 3 and 31. And it reads. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 31. I do not remember how this way may be left. Are they then a Babylon better than they of Zion? You see, basically, are the heathens better than the Israelites? Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 32. Or is there any other people that knoweth thee besides Israel? Or what generation hath so believed thy covenants as Jacob? Because the heathens are not devoted to the Most High's commandments like Cornelius. Well, Cornelius was a devout man. The heathens are not devoted. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 33 and yet their reward appear not and their labor have no fruit for I have gone here and there through the heathen and I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. See so the heathen don't even think about being devoted to the most high God. The Gentiles the biological Gentiles the blood Gentiles they don't even think about being Devoted to the Most High's policies, his will, his commandments, his statutes, his judgments. The biological heathen think not upon his commandments. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 3, verse 33. So we know, just dealing with that alone in the Apocrypha, we know that Cornelius, it's impossible for him to be counted as a blood descendant of a, of a Gentile or a heathen. He was an Israelite foreigner, okay? 
and he was an Israelite man that served in the Roman army. Okay, and thus being a centurion, a commander over a hundred men. All right, he was a devout man and he feared the Most High. And he gave alms to the people and prayed to God always. You see, you see that, guys? So he feared God. It says in Acts chapter 10, verse 2, Cornelius feared God. Now watch this. Let's go to Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, dealing with Cornelius feared God. So Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, watch this. Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament, 12 and 13. Watch this, guys. Listen what Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, and it reads, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Cornelius was a devout man who feared God. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13 says, let us hear the conclusion. When it says, let us, it's talking about the Israelites, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is the whole matter? What is the duty of man? To fear God and keep his commandments. So you don't have the fear of the Lord within you if you don't subscribe and keep his commandments. So a sign of having the fear of the Lord within is to walk wholeheartedly in his commandments. So what is the fear of God? The fear of God is keeping his commandments. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge and that knowledge is the law. So we can see right there in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, it says, let us hear the conclusion let you Israelite man hear this conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Go back to Acts chapter 10, verse 2. It says Cornelius was a devout man, one that feared God. Now, what does that mean? To fear God is to keep his commandments. And we already showed you in um, the Apocrypha. We showed you in 2 Ezra chapter 3. Uh, 2 Ezra chapter 3 verse 35 we showed you the heathens they don't think upon the most high commandments the biological Gentiles the biological heathens they do not think upon his commandments that's 2 Ezra chapter 3 verse 33 in the apocrypha it says the heathens don't think upon the commandments so Cornelius was an Israelite man guys also in Acts chapter 10 verse 3 you know he saw a vision you know Evidently about the ninth hour of the day of an angel that came to him saying it to him, Cornelius. So when Cornelius was praying, like around about the ninth hour, an angel came to Cornelius. Now, who was that angel? It had to be the angel Gabriel. Because when you look at Second Ezra in the Apocrypha, going back into the Apocrypha, when you look at Second Ezra in the Apocrypha, chapter 3. Second Ezra, chapter three, beginning with um, Second Ezra chapter three, and when you look at Second Ezra chapter three, verse um, let me get it together. Second Ezra chapter three, verse. I'm trying to get that precept about uh not I'm sorry guys, not second Ezra. I'm so sorry about that. Not second Ezra, but it's in the apocrypha and it's in Tobit chapter 12, verse 15. I was thinking about something else. Tobit chapter 12, verse 15. Dealing with the angel that came to Cornelius. So Tobit 12 and 15. When you look into Tobit 12 and 15 in the apocrypha. It says that Tobit 12 and 15 I am Raphael 
one of the seven holy angels which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the holy one so we can see that angel that came to Cornelius around the ninth hour of the day that had to be the angel Gabriel concerning Tobit chapter 12 verse 15 in the Apocrypha using that precept because Raphael, Raphael is one of the archangels of, of, of the seven which presents the prayers of the saints he presents the prayers of the saints. He came to, an angel came to Cornelius, so that had to be Raphael, according to Tobit 12 and 15 in the Apocrypha. And then he says that he presents the prayers of the saints. So who are the saints? Who are the saints? That's another question. Who are the saints? Because Raphael presents the prayers of the saints. So guys, ask yourself this. Who are the saints? The saints are the Israelites, and I'll prove that easily. The saints are the Israelites, guys. No if, ands, or buts. They are the Israelites. And I will show you this. All right? So, um, yeah. The saints. Let me give you a precept. So, let's go to... Uh, Psalms 148, verse 13. Psalms 148, verse 13, guys. And this is what it reads in the Old Testament. Psalms 148, verse 13. It says, 148, verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. Psalms 148. Verse 14, he also exalt the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So the saints are the children of Israel. And we can see in Tobit 12 and 15, Raphael presents the prayers of the saints. So that's how we know when he came to Cornelius, Cornelius was an Israelite because he was counted to be a saint using the precepts. Also in Psalms 50, Psalms 50, verse 5. Psalms chapter 50, verse 5. It says, Gather my saints together and to me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The only nation that made a covenant with the Most High by sacrifice is the nation of Israel. So just using those precepts uh, concerning the saints and, and Tobit 12 and 15. Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, would present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. That's how we know that Cornelius was an Israelite, guys. You see, he was an Israelite. Now, a lot of people, they get a misunderstanding on this right here. When you go over to Acts chapter 10, verse 28, Peter tells Cornelius, he says, you know how that it is unlawful for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man coming or unclean. So many brothers and sisters would choke up on this verse because Peter says to Cornelius that it was unlawful. It was unlawful for for the Jews to keep company of another nation. Now, what was this another nation? It was what you call the Northern Kingdom of Israel. Because if you know the history about the 12 tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel eventually split up. And then you had the Northern Kingdom, which was the Kingdom of Ephraim, or what you call the House of Israel. And then you had the Southern Kingdom, which was known as the kingdom of Judah, which were the Jews. So the nation of Israel became a servant nation after Solomon's reign, like during the time of Solomon's son. And the northern kingdom, which was the nine and a half tribes, 
the Northern Kingdom, which is the Latin tribe today, the Hispanic tribes, the Northern Kingdom was known as one nation, and the Southern Kingdom, which was Judah, was known as another nation. How we know that? We can go to Ezekiel 37, verse 21. Ezekiel 37 and 21 in the Old Testament. It talks about how Israel will be restored. Ezekiel 37, 21. And saying to them, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I would take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and I would gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Ezekiel 37, 22. And I would make them one nation because the nation of Israel is not one nation. We are we have been severed into two nations dealing with the northern kingdom, which is the Hispanics, and the southern kingdom today, which is the so-called Negro tribes, the blacks, the Jamaicans, the Haitians. So Israel is not one nation in its fullness right now. So when Israel became a servant nation during the time of Rome, when Israel became dissected, you know, Israel wasn't looked at as one nation. They was looked at as two different nations. Thus dealing with Ezekiel 37 and 22. I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be called no more two nations. This is after Israel is fully restored. We will be no more two nations. It will be no more um, um, northern kingdom. Um, Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. It will be no more that it will be one nation, blacks, Spanish, Latinos, all together. So when Peter